luck be a lady tonight Luck be a lady tonight Welcome to our fifth and final episode from Chapter 5. And in this episode, we're going to talk about human population growth. Now, earlier in a previous screencast, I had told you that the humans have been in exponential growth since the dawn of the Industrial Era. So if you look right around here, this would be the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. And ever since then, humans have, uh, their growth has just skyrocketed. We're in exponential growth. We have not reached our carrying capacity yet. Um, Possibly could happen during your lifetime, but and the reality is, who knows? I mean, this has already been 200 years already, so maybe it could take another 200 years. You know, we just don't know how that's going to work. All right, so let's look at some more information on human population growth. And it really starts with demography. Now, demography is the study of how human populations grow. So it's, it's human population growth patterns. And in fact, when we take a census in our country every 10 years, that helps with the demography because we're looking to see the patterns of how people move, uh, what uh, ethnic groups are being made up in different parts of our country. We're looking at the demographics of our society. Now, one of the key important factors when it comes to demography is you got to come back to Thomas Malthus. And this is when demography uh, makes sense to us in a biology standpoint. Remember, Thomas Malthus was an economist, and he looked at human population growth. So you can consider him one of the first demographers. And he said human growth would be kept in check by war, famine, and disease. Well, what's happening is famine is being kept farther and farther apart due to um, better farming practices, better genetics in our, our uh, crops and livestock, um, disease. You know, starting around the 1920s, you got antibiotics and all the wonderful advances that we've made in medicine over the last 100 years. That's taken into effect, so humans are living longer. And so in reality, we're not keeping our population in check. We're going through uh, demo, or, uh, sorry, uh, exponential growth. Now, back in Thomas's era, you know, we're still in exponential growth. It's right around well, about the time that he's beginning to pass away that the exponential growth takes off. Now, modern demographers are going to look at three things. They're going to look at birth rates, and they're going to look at death rates. Well, duh, you put those two together, that helps you create the growth rate. We've already had that on one of our earlier uh, screencasts. They're also going to look at age structure. Age structure diagrams, remember, we, we've seen these before, and we're going to look at them here again a little bit. This will be able to tell you if you have an expanding population, a stable population, or a um, declining population. Okay, so third world countries, um, India is starting to become a, a first world country, but you know, in many parts of it is still very poor. They're expanding. Um, parts of uh, Europe, let's say Canada, um, uh, let's say like Iceland, Greenland, they're pretty stable. Uh, declining populations. Italy recently has looked at declining. Uh, Russia possibly. Um, think of some of the areas where there's civil war going on in the world. Um, those would be having a declining population. All right, let's get rid of this stuff and let's move on to something different. All right, demographic transition. This is what we typically see when you go from a third world country on your way to a first world country. So think of it this way. You have an undeveloped uh, economy, an undeveloped nation, and you're turning into a developing nation. And I really want you to pay attention to this, uh, this graph down here. <clears throat> All right, so at the beginning, and really if you look over here in this stuff in blue, I'm just going to basically reiterate all that stuff. All right. In the beginning, you have both high death rates and you have high birth rates. All right. So for example, uh, as you're undeveloped, uh, you're having lots of babies, but a number of those babies and their mothers are dying during the birth process, which was not uncommon during most of human history. Uh, as you, uh, your country becomes more developed, then you're going to have hospitals and the medicine to help keep that at, uh, at bay. All right, so as you're going through your developing phase, in other words, you're doing the transition, you're still going to have high birth rates, but your death rate is going to drop. 
And this is as your country is developing better technology, better knowledge in medicine. Uh, you have more resources available for that. And then finally, when you've completed the demographic tr transition, you'll be like most of the Western world, the United States, uh, Canada, Europe, um, Japan, where you have low birth rates, but you also have low death rate, so you have a very stable environment. Oh. All right, let's get rid of that stuff. Okay, make sure you pay attention to this one. I, I, good chance you're going to have some test or quiz questions over demographic transition. <clears throat> All right, age structure. We've had this before. You can find it on page 131 in your textbook, and this studies the number of people in particular age brackets within a population, and it breaks it down into females and into males. And it's going to be able to be, or actually, you're going to use these age structure diagrams to predict if your population is going to grow, if it's stable, or if it's declining. All right. And this is our typical picture that you see for an age structure diagram. Um, I, I kind of think they look like pagodas. Yeah? Um, if the bottom of your pagoda or the bottom of your triangle, like for example here, uh, one that represents Kenya, Nigeria, and Saudi Arabia, if you have a lot of young people at the bottom and very few older people, that's an expanding population, which really is telling you that these individuals right in here, which would be your reproductive years, uh, they're having lots of babies. So you have a high birth rate. Okay, A slow growth, this would be like United States, Canada, Australia, um, where you, basically your people right in this area, which are your reproductive years, they're having slightly more than two babies um, per family. If you only have two babies per family, all you're doing is replacing the mom and dad when they pass away. But when you start to have three, four, five babies, now you're going to be adding to the population because the first two babies are the replacements. The next, you know, baby three, baby four, they're adding to the population. Now, over here, what you're probably having is, you know, they're having families of seven, eight, nine kids. Okay, zero growth. You're essentially having these reproductive years again. They're just having two babies. They're, they're creating replacements for them when they pass away. And this would be a lot of your European nations, Austria, Denmark, and Italy, for example. Okay? I mean, we've went all of this before in another screencast. You should already understand uh, age structure diagrams. So I'm not going to go over this a ton in detail. But just remember, if it's really wide at the bottom, rapid growth. If it's kind of medium wide at the bottom, slow and steady growth. And if, if it's reasonably even all the way up, so pretty narrow at the bottom, then that would be zero growth. And actually, if you're down here in blue, if that's narrower than what you have up here, then you have a declining population. So until our next episode, we're going to catch you on the flip side.